Please. Mm -hmm. Okay. People across nine endless years. Dang, gang, we're late. A land grotesque as its people. Let us speak of the old vultures. Oh, the sound is good. The tournament for the throne. So, summing up. Oh, the quality, 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 quality. Sounds like we've lost a few candidates already too. I think that's fine. Bastards went after something too nasty for their headhunt. A land full of feral Oh my gosh. There we go. People either running or going mad. What do we believe in? Really? Wait, action RPG? Hold up, what? Unless you have the option to just go in turn base, that's different. King, are you? Not exactly. I treat all tribes equally. Each ally of a different tribe. Fascinating. Tribes, hey? Is that like a rat or a bunny? Well, that's interesting. It's like a reverse of Persona, a gameplay style. It's like a mix of strikers. Then it can die alongside you. The heck? I will not let you die in vain. will be sent in. And that's a result screen. To the gallows, not just us, but any innocent folks. Royal funeral. It is a new dawn. And its light shines upon Lord Luisa's king. We got an Irish accent. Oh, someone's surfing the sword. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. No, the hair. You saw that? It's like a butterfly. And finish it in your step. Might be too loud. Coming on October 11th. Not surprised. It did say fall. I like the environment. The location of this place. Of the game. Travel beyond fantasy. Mm hmm. Hello everyone, I'm uh -huh. Kutsura Hashimoto, Hi. the director of this title. For those that may not know me, I've worked on titles such as Shin Megami Tensei 3, Persona 3, Persona mm -hmm. 4, and Persona yeah. 5 among others. Okay. Our program today is about Max's upcoming RPG, Metaphor, to share the latest information with you. As we announced in the trailer earlier, the release date is confirmed. Mm -hmm. The entire team is grateful for the positive feedback we've received since the announcement. But for some of you, perhaps this is the first time you're seeing Metaphor. This work is being brought to you by not only the It might have been forgotten for many, actually. Artists ...to create a brand new RPG. Renowned artists. With this team, we decided to challenge the fantasy genre, aiming to create a game we can call a culmination of our RPGs. Culmination? Our hope is that not only at... Hello? Our hope is that not only Atlas fans, but those who have never played our games, and RPG fans around the world will give this game a shot. That Today, was weird. I'm going to spend some time introducing the gameplay experience of Metaphor, as I talk over while playing the game. Please check out the Atlas YouTube channel for more information that will come further. I think I'm always subscribed to that. That's how I found this video. Please subscribe. <laughs> Before I start playing, let me introduce the premise of the story. In this game, you'll be forging bonds to support your claim for the throne. But it's the unique take on this that we hope puts a spin on the classic tale. In a kingdom of okay. chaos by the king's assassination, a royal magic is triggered that establishes an election. This magic allows any individual of any social status to become the next king by gaining the people's support. 
which sets a battle for the throne in motion. It's so interesting that, like, there, there's a mix of action and turn-based RPG here. I'm just, wow. As it's unique to this game. It's like three houses. Shin Megami Tensei 3. Persona. And terrifying monsters called humans will stand in your way. The stories bring what? Faithful encounters <laughs> humans like are the enemy here? Above all Interesting. Else, a game offers a different experience than a movie. Our monsters movie. here. So to prevent this from becoming just a vehicle for our tale, we've gone to great lengths to flesh out the experience into an exciting, fully fleshed game. There's lots to be excited about, so I hope you'll stay with us till the end. So if humans are the monsters, what, what are the characters we are using? Ah, the gameplay. Yes. The title's logo design is based on the concept of a city's main street. It conveys our hope That's the that menu? Oh, uh, it of could be changing. Times. It's nice. Right, let's start at the beginning. What makes Metaphor different from other fantasy RPGs is the perspective of their world in which our world is their fantasy. After players are uh. the game, they must answer the questions. Is fantasy limited to the confines of imagination? Would you call it a powerless creation? Quadrato? The game questions the power of fantasy, a power we all possess. Interesting. Well, you arrive to your own conclusions. I mean, it's not exactly like Kingdom Hearts, but the idea of Quadratum. ...to save the prince who has been cursed. This is a scene from the beginning of the game. Hmm. What differentiates this from previous Atlas RPGs is that we've added a more dynamic sense of action. The turn-based battles are still central to the combat. Mm -hmm. We've incorporated real-time attacking and dodging elements, as well as dashing around and analyzing oh. things exciting. So there is a mix. The protagonist isn't strong yet. So the difficulty of the battles is intentionally pretty high in this area. We wanted players to get a sense of both tension and accomplishment. Is that like a scan? Oh. Risk fighting right now. So I'll explore cautiously during this. This is so session. interesting. That said, there are multiple difficulty levels and convenience factors to make things easier. So we hope anyone For an Atlas game, can enjoy this is so interesting. It. I can at least cast my usual spell for you. That is Morgana. That is Morgana voice actress. The music you hear in game is in the protagonist's head. Because it's fantasy, of course. The composer behind the music is Shoji Meguro. People probably know him from the Persona series, but I've asked him not to be constrained by his trademark pop style and to take on the challenge of creating a totally new sound to fit this game's world. We hope you'll look forward to hearing it. Um, I am. I love his music. This is a particularly large area in the game, and you can see hordes of enemies ahead. One exciting aspect of this game is that you can decide which enemies to fight and how to deal with them. But I'll explain. Mm, there's a range. We can see you. First, let's take a walk around a city. It seems they did not engage on the character. This is the first stop on our journey. The Royal Capital Grand Trad. The background art was designed by Koda Kazuma, a guest artist we're thrilled to work with. The dynamic comes to life with a oh. medieval painting like shaders. So I hope you enjoy taking it in. Ah, uh, the atmosphere makes sense now. Entrance, and you probably noticed the massive armored vehicle. The protagonist will ride around in this to travel the world. Is that like a dragon? Of these or a dinosaur? By Ikuto Evangel you got some people here, Atlas. Bit, so let's walk around the city a bit more. Using magic, you can ride around on your sword to get from oh. one place to another quickly. Maybe that's what we saw on the trailer. I wouldn't define this game as being open world. But open area, even the distant open zone so game. The That's fine. It doesn't need to be open world. That's overdone. Now we're heading toward an alley. The atmosphere changes a lot from the main street. This is where executions happen. That's not something you see very often in modern day stories. Execution. Oh. You'll also note some people cowering in the streets, because this world has a prevalent gap between rich and poor. 
As for our protagonist, Sounds familiar. He's from an inferior tribe, abhorred by others. Despite his social standing, he's going to participate in the royal tournament. You'll find many problems in each town you visit, and of course, people will need your help. Okay. His interactions affect his popularity in the race. Hmm. Let's check out the town map. You I love the menu. Located, and then instantly move anywhere you've previously visited. This like it definitely fits the, the game at uh, like feel. Let's zoom out to the map of the entire kingdom. This is the royal capital where we are now. In this world, the areas between cities are dangerous areas referred to as wastelands, which makes travel difficult, unlike our world today. Okay. As the, the wastelands progresses, your main hub moves from city to city. The danger areas. That, let's take a look at a new city. This is Martyra, a town we're unveiling for the first time. It's a pastoral town, quite a contrast from the capital. It may be normal in other fantasy RPGs, but through these acts of traveling and staying at new places, I hope you get a true sense of being on a journey, which is a difficult thing to convey in modern day stories. Mm -hmm. By incorporating a unique sense of daily life into traveling, we've made taking a trip feel as real as possible in this game. So like, what, passing, time passing so will have some effect? The time you're being away, how long you've been away, Let's drop in at the recruitment center in this city. What? Here you take requests to fight dangerous monsters. Okay, These monster hunting. The city are called bounties. Bounties give you some nice rewards, which hopefully encourages you to challenge them. And that's really just one of many challenging aspects the game has to offer. This is the weapons shop. Each city you stay in has various facilities, and in this game, your choice of equipment is especially important. In metaphor, we wanted to give you the freedom to customize your party your own way. So we hope you'll even find some joy in making preparations. Wait, so different characters will have different weapons? Not tied to Let's one? The tavern. I see an informant here. Informants offer hints about dungeons and battle strategies. Even collecting information like this is something we put a lot of thought into making enjoyable. Hmm. The back of the tavern is actually an inn. Visiting a new town and staying at a new inn, that's half the fun of traveling, isn't it? It seems like this game is going to be a lot, There's so much to awesome, do in these like a lot for a stream. Cover it all. So stay tuned for further announcements. Moving I mean, on, I say that and I'm streaming Persona 3. The Gauntlet Runner is a vehicle that can travel safely across wastelands. A mobile base, if you will. Should I move my camera? I see the mini-map there. On magic. So our protagonist and many others travel in their Gauntlet Runners to there we go. popularity. Let's go ahead and board. This is the Gauntlet Runner's War Room. If you access the round table here... Oh, now I put something I... ...gather back from town. And a map of your journey opens. I put myself here, there. Most RPGs don't have a time limit on the adventure, but metaphor revolves around the concept of dates and time. Oh, okay, yeah. Today, Duh. Travel often has a fixed itinerary, such as three days and two nights. So in this game, we've captured the travel experience with predetermined lengths of activities and structure. But within that, what you do, where you go, is up to each player who can choose to do things differently. You're free to spend your time as you How long to? No? They answered my question. Have the list of quests I've accepted. You have a set time frame to complete the main story objective at each location you visit. But these side quests play an important role. This is in the more of an too. adventure type. Some require fighting strong enemies. While others mm. may offer rare equipment. The order in which you take on these quests will have a great impact on how difficult the battles feel. So which challenges you take on first will play a big factor in your experience. Now let's pick a destination and head out.
Steampunk. Okay, we have departed. In most games, you arrive at your destination instantly. But here, you're inside the runner, heading toward it. Imagine, for example, living in a camper with your travel companions. Uh-huh. Cooking, conversing, camping, and more. We want you to have a realistic traveling experience. So we designed the game to reflect that. So that's what you guys meant. This is the kitchen. I'm going to city to city. You can cook the ingredients you've gathered with your friends to make valuable items. In the uh. back is the common room. Looks like nobody's here right now, but your allies will often visit you to spend time with them. There is also a collection of books for you to read. Or if you'd rather not do anything, you can sleep here. As you can see, we have Those sleep beds. capsule shaped beds. The Gauntlet Runner's interior is quite spacious and even has its own engine room. Here's a washing machine. And you'll Wash find clothes? Okay. I hope you're excited to Maybe that'll affect the stats of your gear if you don't clean? Huh. You're not limited to staying inside the Gauntlet Runner. If you climb up the ladder to the deck, you can see it moving through this massive world. You can even see monsters soaring overhead. Soaring? The Gauntlet Runner has so much to do as you head to your next oh, stop that it's impossible there is to one. all here. Looks like a so normal bird from afar. Once you've prepared in the Runner or a city, you'll arrive in a dungeon. Here's an introduction to the combat system, which is critical to making progress. Dungeon and combat. This is the entrance to a certain dungeon. Let's check the main menu before we head in. Yes, yeah, so show me the items, stylish menu. Yeah. See that the UI has Man, it looks like a full museum. Something that we were very particular about. You often spend a lot of time navigating menus in RPGs, so we wanted to give players a beautiful interface to enjoy a stronger sense of <laughs> heart. Let's check out the party customization. Man, have listen to their menus. Strengthening a they party don't miss. Lies in the job system, and the growth of these jobs is critical to advancing through the game. In metaphor, the power of these jobs is called archetypes. So essentially, their persona. Very important element to this game, which I'll give you a few more details on. That was that an ranking anxiety, piece? The protagonists acquire these archetypes. Anxiety. Think of them as heroic figures everyone possesses. Their powers manifest in various forms throughout the game. Examples of some archetypes that show up early in the game include the Seeker, who is an all-rounder in battle. The Mage, who strikes with offensive Castle. magic. And the Thief. Mudo. Yeah, the, the same spells, of course. But the key point of the system here is that the character can undergo a transformation taking on the appearance of various heroic figures and then use their skills to fight. Oh. Let's enter the dungeon and take a look at what kind of combat is possible. Can learn different classes without different personas. Or Once you enter the dungeon, different archetypes. Use your companion's power to analyze your surroundings. It's like job classes. This will give you a sort of ranking of nearby enemies. And by that I mean how strong they are. As you can see, many enemies are glowing blue, which indicates a lower rank. In other words, weaker enemies. Oh, I see what well, one's in red. During development was our goal to make the game as fast-paced and exhilarating as possible. Tedious and slow-paced enemy encounters can ruin a game's rhythm, especially True. if you can win against weaker enemies. Now, you'll notice we have a large monster ahead. More dangerous enemies give off a yellow glow. If the analysis indicates they're formidable, you should approach cautiously, unlike before. Pressing the squad button will call your party members to your side, transitioning us smoothly into a turn-based battle. So if it's going to be a long battle, and put it turn-based, but it's going to be short action. Just like this. Even for battles that require a squad approach to defeat them with skills, the action portion before it is designed to provide... Man, if this does well, I can see other RPG companies, dev teams, do this. 
The squad option allows you to engage and enjoy tense tactical battles without even drawing close and using a variety of skills and strategic actions. The party customization is highly flexible and strategic. So we encourage you to create your Is this a boss music? Like a party. mini boss music? Or like a... To call it like strong enemy. Not boss, a strong enemy. Bonus rewards by defeating all enemies without taking any damage. We implemented this feature to provide a sense of accomplishment in party customization. So I suggest you try it out. So that's the exhilarating action elements and the strategic nature of the turn-based battles. It's a battle system with two aspects to enjoy, so we hope you have fun when the game comes out. Awesome. Next, I'd like to touch on the volume of dungeons. I wonder what that's going to affect on um, people who don't like turn-based. Like, will they try it? Will they like it? As part of the main story, and side dungeons, which you can explore as part of quests. Both types will, of course, plunge you into battle. In terms of the number of dungeons to challenge, it's more than any previous title of ours. For the more dungeon mechanics we've designed were created to avoid impacting the balance and pacing, reducing anything that may bore you. The battle system in these dungeons is one of our strongest selling points. Mm, okay. So you enjoy it. So a lot of exploration in these dungeons. As we created the game, one area we focused on was how spending time on the road impacted the growth of your party members. One of the systems that symbolize this is the follower system. The protagonist will meet and befriend various people over his journey. As he continues to deepen these bonds, these followers will become his strongest supporters. Seeing their way of life Social link. these interactions, the protagonist senses the heroic image within them, giving him access to new archetypes in battle that awaken with that will help him get new classes. Okay. Player to decide which followers to prioritize nice. interacting with. Finding strategies to gain advantage both in dungeons and outside of them is a unique aspect of this game. We hope you enjoy them. That's cool. There's more to share about archetypes, but we'll save that for future announcements. I'll just say for now that there's a significant number of them in the game. Hmm. Yeah, other keep the surprises. Also equip any type of archetype, giving you countless options in forming your party. Take a look. I'll show you on screen. Here's a party consisting only of brawlers unique parties like this are mm -hmm. fully possible so we hope you get creative with it metaphor has been created with the goal of fusing the idea of a journey with interpersonal interactions party growth combat and a taste of the storyline that we've described today into a single game experience so when the game releases we hope you'll experience these aspects to the fullest Okay. What did you think? Very interesting. That was only scratching the surface of the journey and the basics of the game system. There's so much more we can't it wait looks to so share. Nice. It's a massive game filled with interesting and unique elements. As for the narrative, I only touched on the beginning of the story, but the surprising twists and turns we're known for await you. Okay, good. Don't don't mention any. Looking forward to hearing more about the story and characters that make this game don't mention any, please. special. In addition, starting in June, we're nice box art on demos in various events around the world. Oh, demos uh, on events. Hard to get the game I need to look release, on so information on that. I should also mention we're opening pre-orders today. Of course. So don't miss out. In addition to the standard edition, Metaphor is also available in a special physical collector's edition. This year marks 35 that years artwork. since Atlas released its first game. And oh Metaphor my God. serves as the 35th anniversary commemoration That box the behind Atlas the box brand. art? The brown one? Mm. It's a celebration title. And we're very if only I could get it. Game into but nah, hands. that's not possible. So we hope you check it out when it launches. 
Before I sign off, I have a short video we prepared for those of you who stuck with us to the end. Oh? This is a scene from the Gauntlet Runner, which I spoke about earlier. Please look forward to the all-new RPG from Atlas, Metaphor. Okay, definitely. Thank you very much for your time today. You guys hardly miss, so I trust y'all. Bad. Oh, nice. And I love RPGs like this. And that's a tooth. What was that? That final part, I don't know. It was a little odd. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, that's officially over, over. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay, music. Uh, my face. Okay, that was really interesting. And I can't wait to know more about this thing. There's so much I want to dissect and s split apart. Because they're missing turn-based and action. Something they've done before with this game right here. No, that's a that's Digimon. Uh, they've done this one. If no one's played this... Oh, the, oh, the light. Hold on. If no one's played this game, you want to try a, a Atlas game, an Atlas Persona game. This one's action RPG, and it's really good. I need to finish it, but what I've played, and what many other RPG fans have played, the gameplay is like Kingdom Hearts, and it's really good. I haven't gone around to it because other games, but I highly, highly recommend.